I have the pleasure of welcoming and introducing um, Deepan Modi, who's talking to low cost monitoring systems for small scale precision aquaculture systems. And here we see crossovers and, and opportunities for crossovers, a agile technology social enterprise that reduces risk and improves productivity. Namaste, I'm Dipen Modi. I'm the founder and managing director of Project Sajar Technologies, where we design and build small scale precision aquaculture system for low income households. So we work at the intersection of aquaculture, social sciences and technology. Technology we are using is IoT and machine learning. And what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, automate the crucial processes in aquaculture so that people can take up uh, aquaculture in their own backyard on the lines of backyard poultry. So if you look at this, this is our prototype for water quality monitoring. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to automate the uh, water quality reading taking process so that uh, the system would uh, take this on your behalf and would send these readings to you over cloud and also the uh, through the on-site display. If you look at, look at these sensors, these are analog sensors for pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, TDS, turbidity, temperature and level sensors. And uh, one of the important sensors, ammonia, is missing because that sensor is quite expensive and we are uh, uh, trying to do a workaround for that sensor. These are analog sensors because uh, digital sensors are expensive and what we are trying to do is we are taking uh, this uh, analog input and with the signal conditioning uh, circuit, we are converting that uh, analog input into a digital input which in turn goes to our controller board or the motherboard which has a, its own on-site display where uh, you could see the pH right now is 7.1, the temperature is 24 degree centigrade and the dissolved oxygen is 4 ppm. So uh, this is a programmable board in which you can define the frequency of uh, the frequency with which you take the reading. Say if you want to take reading every one hour, if you want to take the reading uh, once a day, if you want to take reading twice a day, once in a week, you can all pro you can program this in the board and also this board acts as an early warning system. So any parameters going beyond a predefined range, this system would provide you with an alert which would be on site uh, in form of sound and uh, visual. Also the alert would go over cloud to your uh, phone or the Android app which we are building. So this would help you in uh, maintaining the fish health, reducing fish mortality and even in the worst possible case if fish mortality is happening you would be at least getting to declutter the reason for that. You would be uh, having the data to find the root cause of why that mortality happened. So uh, this is the objective on which we are working and with uh, this prototype it's not a finished product yet. We are working on the uh, casing part and with uh, once uh, we move ahead in this prototype we would be uh, soon starting the pilot for this prototype at field level in a a real life aquaculture system. So this is uh, uh, what I wanted to demonstrate. We are trying to build this system as a plug and play system so that people can uh, use it without uh, much skill level or without much technological help. So this is what we are working on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Deepan. Um, my question really comes at uh, so, uh, sorry to uh, interrupt Dr. Kim, actually I wanted to add a couple of things to that video because I could not uh, reshoot another video as uh, like uh, COVID related restrictions were going on. So for the uh, next couple of months, yeah, this is a, a six month old video. For the next couple of months after that video, we actually finished the prototyping and we uh, actually uh, the uh, ammonia sensor problem which I was mentioning. So we actually uh, did a workaround for them. We uh, built a uh, acrylic chamber with motors and actuators and we put some water added reagent and then with the uh, uh, RGB uh, camera sensor we captured uh, the value and uh, started matching it with, with the predefined ammonia values which we had. So that was the very small uh, component of uh, uh, image recognition uh, which we used and also the object larger objective being uh, with uh, these systems installed at many locations the amount of data we would be capturing we have put a, a, a simple uh, correlation regression uh, algorithm in the back end so that we can uh, uh, find out the uh, longer term trend of the relationship between these uh, specific water quality parameters value and the growth of the fish so uh, please uh, continue with your question yeah, I just note that uh, we've seen quite a few solutions today being driven by maybe more um, developed industrialized fisheries and so on. And we rely on them to have the resources and private business to have the resources to 
to push the envelope, but it's great to see you trying to amalgamate such systems and, and try to operationalize them at the, at, the, at the smaller scale. And I think this is something that if we start to look at overall the kind of program that an international agency like FAO could, could put on the table to help people collaborate is to, and this came up yesterday with uh, a gentleman called Tom Y. It's just really putting people in touch with other people who are working on the same types of questions and making sure that those people have the right avenues to explore if they have potentially similar solutions or similar problems to, to bite off together. I just wondered, Deepan, if you could share with us a little bit of how you came to do this work. What, what was it that said to you, we need to, I have the skills or I have the need or what was it that drove yeah, you? Yeah, actually it started with the need. So uh, I am working with small and marginal fishing communities here in India with since last six years. So uh, prior to that, I've spent a decade in capital markets. So uh, working there in algorithms and very high complex uh, technologies was my domain. When I moved to social sector around six years back, uh, when I started working with uh, these communities, then I figured out the need for uh, appropriate technology solutions. Like you need to build uh, technology solutions which are within their reach. Like it's good to have, good to build very sophisticated AI uh, module, but it, it would be of no use for them if we, we can deploy this in their own backyard. So then uh, since, uh, as you uh, rightly mentioned, like industry level solutions are there, but they were not uh, affordable for uh, low income households or backyard level, like small scale aquaculture. So then I started uh, to build my own uh, technology around three years back and uh, got some delayed because of COVID and other things. Yeah, but now uh, looking forward to my uh, pilot prototype is ready. Thank you. Ma Matt, can I hand over to you if you've got a question? Yeah, fantastic work, Deep, and I think it's really uh, important to see that uh, uh, link to food security uh, of the millions of people that are dependent on small scale production uh, from aquatic ecosystems. And also, I really like the link between like water quality monitoring and, and uh, productivity as well. I think like your, your ambition to develop your, your mobile app uh to, to to look at sizing and, and biomass production um is is something that a, a form of people like this should you know be able to work together and 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 particularly i i think your sort of project is is so so important uh because it has an impact on it has potential impact on so many millions of people who are dependent on the production for, for food security so yeah uh, have you got a pathway to develop the app uh, for, for measuring the size of the fish or anything that you can see or, or do you have any uh, direction uh, at the moment that you can see clearly? Or... Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot Matt, for your kind words. So yeah, so uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, so with uh, the final production or the final biomass, so we would be uh, measuring that with compared to the water quality monitoring data, which we have captured over the past and uh, build a correlation between the final outcome and the uh, conditions in which the fish was grown. So that is the relationship which we are looking uh, forward to build between these two data sets. Fascinating. Thank you very much, Deepan.